The slight disadvantage is that if it is an, an, an anonymous um, online survey, like, like if it doesn't require a person to answer with their name, then it's possible the same person could you know, do the survey multiple times. So that's one possible, I, I like saying the word possible. <laughs> okay. So that's one uh, option, um, disadvantage, sorry. That's one disadvantage of it. All right. And another interesting technique that is, uh, that might be new to you are what we call brand tags. So what are brand tags? So we show visitors the logos of big companies and we ask them, what's the first word that pops into your head? And then depending on how many times a particular word or phrase is said, then that will be um, bigger in a tag cloud. So for example, Jollibee, if somebody says uh, masarap, and then 50 other people say the same word to describe Jollibee, then in the tag cloud, the word masarap will be bigger than the other words. Depending on the frequency of the response, the size of the word will be bigger than the rest. So let's play this game. Uh, we have logos here. They're really popular. So choose one logo. Sayang nga, wala yung classmates natin, no? Kasi this would have been a, a, fun, a fun activity. Okay. So is, okay. Uh, choose one logo and then just tell me the first word that comes to your mind. Or do you want me mm. to go first? Oh, okay, okay, okay. You go first. I go now, sir. No, it's okay, it's okay. I go now. I go now. Okay. Um, <laughs> Netflix, sir. Okay, Netflix. Ano yung unang movies? Okay. By the way, uh, this these are supposedly the most tweeted. Um, I can't remember if it's companies or logos. Noong 2019. Okay. Um, for, mm. for me, next naman. Um, Samsung Korea. That's the first word that comes to my mind. Korea. So, your turn. Another, sir. Apa. Abusin natin yung ano, tig tig lima mm. tayo. Okay, bench. Okay, first word. Perfume. Comes... Oh, wow. Okay, I, I wouldn't usually think of perfume first. Okay. Um, oh. naman, um, sun silk hair, siyempre. Shampoo, I don't know. Mm. Mm -mm. Um, Mokdo, sir. Oh, fries. <laughs> fries, okay. Um, angkas, uh, never. Uh, let me explain. Kasi never ko pa siya nasubukan. So I have no idea Apo. kung paano yung angkas. So that's the word that came to my mind. Anong logo tong parang yung black -black? flower po? Hindi no? mm -hmm. ko rin po alam, sir, eh. Pants ba siya? <laughs> Hindi ko alam. Mm -mm. So Baka ka puns, sir. Okay, so kung, sure. kung puns siya, ano una mong naisip hmm. na, na word? Mm, cream. Cream, okay. Tapos Coca-Cola, <laughs> ako naman Coca-Cola, diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first word that comes to my mind. And meron pa ba? Did we miss anything? Or para na Shopee. Shopee. Okay, so last one. Shopee. Okay. Mm, cheap. <laughs> cheap. Okay. Meaning affordable. Abot kaya yung... Affordable. Abot. Okay. So, um, kasi certain words, they also have connotations. Eh. Pag sinabi mo cheap means and negative. Pero affordable is like... <laughs> More, new, more neutral, see, affordable. Okay, and so yun, that's an example of what, thank you, thank you, Sir Lane. That's an example of what we would do if we conduct brand tags. Okay, so madali lang siyang gawin, 
you can flash a picture and then what was the word that came into their their minds okay so psychology lang siya and then we also have telephone surveys so telephone surveys they offer more flexibility uh mas madali siyang gawin obviously if um, as long as you have a database of phone numbers uh, but they do suffer from higher cost, especially if these numbers are mobile numbers. Although I don't know if that applies in the Philippines kasi meron naman mga only call. No? But the biggest drawback probably for telephone surveys is the lower participation. Okay. So ano ibig sabihin yan? Very few people actually nakilala ko are patient enough or willing enough to be surveyed on the phone. So ang phone survey, can it cannot be a lot of questions. No? Kasi maraming taong ayaw sa phone survey. Okay. So uh, we finished with telephone surveys. Let's go to the next one. Okay. So the tempo. Okay. So we have face-to-face -face interviews okay they're the most flexible ang maganda sa face-to-face -face interview is that nakikita ng researcher if question mark yung tanong sa interviewer and therefore they can you know um, explain things that might need explaining all right but um, they also tend to be time consuming and expensive to do, if, especially if you have to travel to interview different people. Sometimes, now here's a, a criticism some people have with regards to face to face interviews. They sometimes say that it's less likely to yield truthful results. So, bakit naman nangyayari yun? No, one, the respondent might feel, oh, I, I, I should say something that the interviewer wants to hear. Okay. Another possibility is the interviewer himself or herself might have biases that will skew the results towards a particular option or towards a particular interpretation. So, my 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 point then sila no but but usually this is also still uh, a good way to gather primary data and then the next slide now this is very interesting uh, this might also be new to you deprivation research okay so they need deprive yung mga loyal consumers ng brand Meaning, whatever it is that they're loyal to, the, the item or the product, it's taken away from them for a period of time. So an example of this is when Verizon, it's an American telecommunications uh, company, a mobile company, they um, deprived customers of their phones for a period of time just to see how, how they would react, what their experience would be, would be like if they had to spend a, a day i can't remember the the duration maybe two days without their without their phone okay so deprivation research another example is burger king so what they did was same thing they deprived um the hardcore whopper fans so the whopper is a kind of burger that they sell in uh, burger king and then they had them journal their experiences or their thoughts, their feelings. And um, surprisingly, this eventually became like the foundation for uh, a successful ad campaign. It was their strategy. So deprivation research, that's something we don't normally hear about. Okay. Ito na. So earlier, what was mystery shopping? So we can answer that by defining what is a mystery shopper. So, madali lang naman, no? a mystery shopper, it's a person who is hired by a market research firm. They go to retail stores, they pretend to be just a casual shopper, and the, they collect information about the store's display, prices, and the quality of their sales staff. So, so typically, ang nagpapa mystery shopping ay yung mismong kumpanya who wants to know uh, how their 
performing. For example, um, if I am a, an owner of a department store, mas gusto ko malaman kung maayos ba ang trato ng aking sales staff sa mga shoppers. So I could try this method. No? So somebody will <clears throat> excuse me. So somebody will pose as a casual shopper, go to my department store, and then they'll they'll give me feedback later. Na ay ang susungit ng mga sales ladies nyo, or um, they didn't answer my questions completely, stuff like that. So it's an interesting market research technique. Okay, so this definition comes from the business dictionary at businessdictionary.com. And okay, so other sources of primary data include the focus group. Alam na alam na natin kung ano focus group, may facilitator, and then we also have the ethnographic study. This is also interesting because the researcher will visit the person's home or go directly to the person's workplace, the business, and then observe how the customer uses the product in a realistic environment. Kasi iba pa rin yung makikita mo, uh, nahirapan ba silang gamitin yung produkto, um, may aspects pa ng product na hindi appealing, um, were there things that they had to look at the manual before they understood how to use it. So this is something that an ethnographic, eth uh, sorry, ethnographic study could be useful for. All right, so advantages of primary data, it's specific, it's proprietary, meaning the company owns the results so they can keep the results to themselves. Kasi it's primary data. It's controlled. So the company has a say in which consumers the ad agency will talk to, what method methodology to use, and what analytical tools to employ. Disadvantages is that medyo magastos nga, it's costly. Um, and the company will bear all the expenses and it's time consuming in all phases, time consuming to design, to execute, to analyze as well. Next slide. Okay, secondary data, of course, government sources, yung mga census, yung Bureau of Statistics, um, and other possible government websites. Syndicated survey, a syndicated survey, merong ibang tao na magsusurvey on a, on a large scale, and then they, they uh, sell their surveys. Na pinapackage mo na nila, for example, consumer attitudes or actual purchases, and then companies will pay to access this data set. And then also we have internal second data. Wow. Oh, oh, bongga. So, yun na, yun na malungkot na the more money a company has, mas may advantage talaga sila sa competition. Kasi pwedeng hindi na sila magpa-survey. They could, they could just buy uh, a package already ng survey. A uh, package of data sets. And then, internal secondary research. Baka naman previously, meron na mga reports from within the company. Uh, reports about uh, from the salespeople, from the customers. So, kung meron ng dating na conduct na research, that can be another form of uh, secondary data. Internal naman siya. And then, okay. So, ang advantages ng secondary data, mas mura siya, uh, generally speaking, because you, you just uh, get other previously published and publicly available data or you buy already. Uh, data and then it's rapidly accessible and uh, what, what you mean by that is you don't need to hire anyone anymore to analyze it it's already been analyzed it has a large sample size especially big companies who do research for example and it tends to be reliable because these external research organizations usually have already years of experience so kaya sila yung suki ng mga uh, companies who need valuable data or valuable data, for example. 